Good morning. Um, thank you very much for attending our webinar this morning, Why Choose a Safety Software System. My name is Fergal. Um, for this webinar, I'm going to be um, assisted with my colleague, Michael. Uh, the structure is, is I'll uh, take you through the context, which is a brief presentation about the context of choosing a safety software system, and then Michael will be giving you a live demo of the software itself. Um, just briefly, just in terms of housekeeping, just because of the amount of attendees on this webinar this morning, uh, everybody is in mute mode except for myself and Michael, but if you wish to ask a question, you could probably see in the bottom right-hand side of your GoToWebinar console the ability to type a question. If you type a question uh, at any stage during the webinar, we'll see that question coming up. And after we have uh, completed the second part, which is the demo, if we have a couple of minutes left, we will read out any questions and ask them, answer them on the fly. Um, if uh, we haven't time to answer the questions on the fly, we will get back to the person who asked the question directly. Um, so, uh, without further ado, I'll, I'll just get into the presentation. Um, in terms of duration, uh, we'll aim to have the presentation concluded within 15 minutes. Um, uh, there's not too much uh, PowerPoint, in fact, no PowerPoint, just a couple of pictures here that we get through, um, just to give you the background, and then we'll get into the demo itself, which will probably be about 20 minutes. So, we'll hope we'll be aiming to con conclude by um, uh, a quarter past 11 uh, thereabouts, if we can, uh, depending upon the level of questions. So, why choose a safety software system? Well, what's the context? In terms of the regulatory context, we're going to be using the HSC as the regulatory authority within the UK. Obviously, wherever you're based, you may be based in Ireland, um, the US or further afield, and they own, they own, uh, the uh, local regulatory authority, authority will be relevant in your own geography. But in the HSE, there's um, published statistics for 2014, 2015, essentially saying that if you are a business of roughly 1,000 workers, that you can expect um, uh, five injuries uh, per year that will lead to over a seven-day absence. And on average, each one of those injuries will cost £27,000, um, which is, I suppose, an alarmingly high statistic. Um, and as well, obviously, there are a number of less severe injuries and incidents um, and even near misses within that picture as well. Uh, and obviously more severe ones. Um, so uh, there is a, a high level of incidents occurring on an annual basis that have potential implications for you and your business. Um, the HSE also uh, attribute responsibility and they um, identify the factors which led to poor corporate health and safety accountability and they're quite damning as you can see. Failure of the board could take control, rubber stamping of management decisions and health and safety issues, lack of resources and poor communication. So really this all talks to um, lip service being paid to health and safety at a senior management level, which really means that it's it's a very, very difficult and invidious position for any health and safety manager to be in. It's a very responsible position, but um, are you getting the necessary resources, the necessary um, level of communication and involvement at all levels of the business to make sure that you're deploying the uh, safety culture that you're um, you're aspiring to within your business? So, what are the potential consequences of this scenario um, uh, where the, uh, there are risks of incidents happening? Um, there's a fairly nasty um, uh, uh, report here of, an, of a serious instance that happens in a food manufacturer, and obviously there's serious negative consequences to the individual involved, obviously in terms of reputational damage to the company, and the HSC have highlighted poor safety practices in terms of uh, risk assessments failing to recognize the danger. There's another business here, um, a, uh, a helicopter um, company that uh, revolved in a serious incident where there are fatalities and that business actually wound up, went into uh, Chapter 11 bankruptcy proceedings um, soon after the, the serious incident occurred. And then obviously here is another one. Um, effect on a company where uh, the HSC served a prohibition notice on a, a site uh, where a, uh, a business was operating unsafe practices that obviously closed down um, their operations which has serious effects on the productivity and consequently the profitability of that particular project, that contract and that business. Um, the HSC in that context has an ongoing warrant to visit your offices, to visit your sites, to make sure that you are 
complying with health and safety practices. You don't even have to have a, a an incident occur. Um, they can uh, identify near misses or the potential for incidents, which can result in a in a prohibition notice. In terms of the effects on senior management, um, there are uh, within the health and safety regulations uh, fines that can be um, levied on organisations for poor health and safety practices that can be serious and significant and in the in the millions. Also morally and ethically, um, employers and senior managers and directors have a responsibility to their employees um, to provide a safe working environment. Uh, from an ethical perspective, you can see a report here on the BBC News website. Uh, identifying the fact that a an employee was sacked because he voiced health and safety concerns, which obviously is a, is a serious, um, I suppose, negative environment for that business to be um, to be working in. Um, and also in terms of insurance and insurance claims and insurance costs, if your breach is seen to be a criminal breach, you will not be covered by insurance. Uh, so uh, criminal punishments and fines cannot be covered uh, by insurance. Um, and also if you're if you are encountering numerous claims, uh, civil claims, your insurance costs, your insurance premiums, and your insurance excess will increase, uh, which are again are are um, uh, negative financial effects for your business and for senior management. Uh, in terms of the solutions to these problems, uh, I'm not going to go into the solutions in, in, in detail because Michael will be covering that in the demo, uh, but essentially what you'd like is, is a system to enable you um, enable you see, a, I suppose, a compliance oversight in terms of health and safety issues, in terms of audits, risk assessments, training, etc., that you can view, you can get information, you can analyze trends, and basically appropriately manage the health and safety environment within your business. Um, so really what you're looking for is good information that's on time, that's accurate, that enables good decisions to be made to provide that safe working environment. The health and safety manager, again in the context where there is poor uh, involvement uh, from a senior management or a board level, um, I, as I mentioned, it is a difficult place to be in. Um, there is, you know, if you have a paper-based or an Excel process, it can be a high uh, administrative or bureaucratic uh, burden, um, that it's a drag to get things done in a, in a manual process that's cumbersome, it's very, very difficult to do. Um, uh, your workforce, is your workforce likely to be engaged in health and safety issues if, if it doesn't see senior management being um, engaged in the health and safety issue? So um, they will take their leads directly from senior management uh, uh, in terms of their uh, level of engagement within with your safety culture. Um, and again, that visible and active support, strong leadership will make sure that everybody is oriented towards providing a safe working environment and ultimately that is the game, um, the end game uh, within uh, health and safety. It is the responsibility of every single employee from, from uh, senior management, CEO, all the way down through to every staff member to assure that health and safety is something that is managed actively and proactively throughout the business. Again, in terms of solutions for the health and safety manager, what you're looking for um, is a system that's easy to use, that's easy for people to access, um, where that's mobile enabled in terms of uh, undertaking audits. It's easy for people within your business to maybe identify hazards or near misses or observation, and it's easy for this information to be captured and collated for you at a at a senior management or health and safety management level, whereby you're you're managing those observations, you're managing those hazards, you're managing their corrective actions, making sure the audits and the risk assessments are done and the actions are followed through appropriately. And then in terms of employees on the ground, I mean, a simple question, is a safety statement visible? Is it available to all employees? Do they know that health and safety is taken seriously um, in relation to the specific hazards? If a risk assessment is done in an environment, is that suitable or or are all uh, employees actually trained on the risk assessments and the outputs of the risk assessments? Are they communicated to? Um, 
are, are, are systems in place uh, in terms of equipment? Is there a competency um, within the uh, within the business in terms of providing health and safety? Um, are people's behaviours being affected by management uh, in terms of the importance of health and safety? And do your employees know that they have their own duty of care? Do they know that they have a legal responsibility to receive health and safety training that they cannot, um, for example, arrive at work in an intoxicated state, etc., that these are legal uh, duty of care that employees have? Are they even aware of these uh, these responsibilities that they have? Um, so what is this and how do we all, um, I suppose, distill this into the reasons of why choosing a health and safety contact uh, software? Well, um, what we worked with many businesses who have been successful in deploying software and what they do is they distill it down to a regulatory um, environment, a moral and ethical uh, environment, financial and productivity. So really what you're looking to identify is, okay, what is the law, the legal framework, what's your health and safety act, what are the health and safety regulations, what are the potential consequences of a being culpable in a health and safety event, um, potential for criminal record, you know, potential for directors to uh, be um, criminally charged, protect uh, potential if they're found guilty of going to prison, potential for fines based upon the regulations, which is based upon the um, um, the, uh, the culpability and the severity and the potential for an incident to take place. And this is what is monitored by the HSE with that overall we can uh, deliver an improvement notice, deliver a uh, prohibition notice, or again recommend that fines be levied on you. But also in terms of a regulatory framework, you may have ISO accreditation, you may have some kind of safety accreditation or risk accreditation, which is important to your business, uh, which is um, all about the processes that you and uh, the checks and balances that you have in place within your um, uh, within your business. And what can happen there if you've got poor processes, paper-based processes that are difficult to prove, um, that these accreditation can be revoked. Um, from a moral and ethical perspective, you have a look at your duty of care. Duty of care is the legal responsibility to take reasonable care to avoid causing harm. Um, Who's who's the, is this duty of care to? It's to employees, to customers, and to all others affect, uh, affected. So morally and ethically, you must be providing a safe working environment, um, and the consequences of those, uh, the negative consequences of those, uh, not providing your moral and ethical or fulfilling your obligations, can be serious in terms of a company reputation. Um, also, from financial perspective, you want to reduce cost or avoid costs such as fines, damages claims, insurance costs, legal fees, etc. Ideally, you'd like to increase revenues and reduce churn. Churn is the loss of customers. So increasing revenues and securing your business plan is about having a good safety program, which is improved customer satisfaction. Your ISO accreditation that we mentioned earlier may help you win tenders. Um, avoiding of reputational damage means that you're avoiding loss of customers. And then in terms of productivity, you know, Poor safety equals high lost time, which is negative productivity. You want to avoid that. Prohibition notice is negative productivity. Who you want to worker morale is negative productivity. You want to avoid that. Paper and spreadsheets is negative productivity. Um, a drain not only on the HSC team but on individual staff. Um, and also it's a drain to business growth. It's a restriction and a barrier to business growth, paper-based processes. And really, it's incumbent upon you um, as, I suppose, a senior health and safety person um, when looking at health and safety software is look at, okay, what are the potential negative scenarios? You know, what are the potential negative scenarios of my business being seen to be culpable in a serious event? Serious events can happen. They do happen. Um, and if, if we can't prove that we've fulfilled our duty of care, what are the possible consequences? So what are the possible um, uh, prison sentence fines? Um, what are the possible consequences from the HSC and the closure of the site? You know, morally and ethically, there's plenty of uh, the HSC website themselves have a have a, an up-to-date feed, uh, which is the latest you know um, identification of uh, prohibition notices, fines, or even court cases. You can see here, I offer my heartfelt ap apology, which is the CEO of a business where, as a result of people dying. Um, this is another construction company where a, 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 a justice said that they're a disgrace to the construction industry and they're not entitled to make profits in the blood and lives of its workers. Like These are serious negative scenarios with serious effects on their business in terms of fines. I think these in the last month alone, one million, one million 
pound fine, seven hundred and fifty thousand pound fine, two point six million pound fine, <coughs> all available on the HSC website. And then in terms of productivity, productivity uh, can not only in terms of lost time prohibition notice, but you know even strike. You know that uh, individuals, um, uh, businesses have have gone into strike as a result of a row over health and safety. So the flip side of that coin in terms of the value of deploying a health and safety software, morally and ethically, you're securing your company reputation. From a legal and regulatory perspective, you're, you're um, uh, assuring that you've got happy stakeholders, you know, uh, people aren't being sued, people, uh, you, there's no cases coming in, there's no legal fees, um, you're assuring your accreditation, you're not at risk from HSC prohibition notices, improvement notices, the financial benefits reduce claims, reduce insurance costs, and your productivity benefits reduce lost time, and as a HSE business and a HSC team, you're more proactive. And what can this mean in terms of a, a success story? We've got one uh, a customer of our own, quite a small business, only 300 employees, but part of a larger entity. Um, they had a, a, a scenario where they felt that they weren't capturing uh, all enough hazards within their business in terms of managing um, uh, health and safety uh, incidents. They had an average of four claims per year. They deployed our software. The hazard reporting went through the roof. Um, last year, they had zero claims for the first time in their business history, um, and the consequence, they had significant reduction in insurance premiums uh, and claims, and a very, very happy CFO. Also, the health and safety manager was held up as a shining light as the example across the business and the software is now being deployed internationally across this business which is a, a food manufacturing organization. Um, so really when you're securing funds the mistake that um, a lot of people make is only look at the time and motion savings of removing paper. So that in our experience will not be successful in securing funds for a business case for health and safety software. In our experience, only looking at the time and motion savings as a result of removing paper from a process uh, uh, will have a success rate of less than 10% of projects will be approved by the board. So you really got to extend out your business case to look at your business context. What do we operate? Where do we operate? What are the past and present events within our business or within similar business? And what have those consequences been to those companies or to us? What are the future possible events and the future potential consequences of those events to our business under those um, four pillars that I mentioned, the regulatory pillar, the moral and ethical pillar, the financial pillar, and the productivity pillar, and really to use a questionnaire and get down to hard data to, um, to deliver out a business case, which is something that we have, uh, we've got experience in. And our, um, in our experience, if this done, what this means is that you've got a much, much higher um, likelihood of the, your project and your health and safety culture being successful because you understand at all levels of the business and most importantly at senior management level, at board level, what are the success criteria. Typically, you'll get strong executive um, sponsorship because everybody's on board, uh, on board with what the this, this success criteria it is. The actual implementation of the software is very, very successful and is speedy. Um, I mean, we could expect 12 weeks, um, three months as a, as a normal implementation time for our first phase of health and safety software, which we have done with two um, reference customers here. They're large businesses, multiple thousand employees, um, multiple uh, business users, multiple geographies um, that we've got a lot of experience doing. And really the story doesn't end there, it's not just about implementation, it's about ongoing success and ongoing continuous improvement. Um, we will engage with you on a quarterly basis to how we're delivering against those success criteria. Um, we will have webinars like this, uh, two learning webinars. Our existing customers have a webinar um, the day after tomorrow on our mobile application and that is an ongoing uh, resource that's free of charge to our customers. Um, also we've got um, in customer success forums, so um, we have a meeting in Birmingham tomorrow with 35 of our existing customers, and they're really discussing about their own successes, 
but what they would like to see within our software, what they'd like to see within our roadmap. So this is all talking about our continuous improvement in terms of improving the safety culture within your business. So that's really the context to what, uh, why I choose a safety software system. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to hand over to Michael for the demo. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Virgil, for that. Uh, my name's Michael, and I'm a customer success manager here at Effective Software. So what I'm going to do now is bring up my screen. So you'll be able to see, essentially, my screen here, and I'm logged on to a demo environment. But just to give you a bit of background about, um, about customer success here and our team. So every one of our clients are assigned a customer success or let's say account manager and it's it's really our goals to ensure that every one of our clients can use the system as well as we can um, and throughout the life cycle we're always ex let's say expanding within an organization maybe you want to use different modules or areas of the system so we're always on hand to give you a helping hand with that and set you up really in new areas um, so today, really, my focus is to go over the four main modules. I'm, I'm going to keep this uh, as brief as possible. I'll aim to finish this in about 15 to 20 minutes. So let's say five minutes per main module. So as I said, we're logged into a demo environment here. So I essentially am logged on to a particular site. So let's say I'm on the Dublin site, for example. Um, all I can see here are all the modules on my page I have access to. So you can see there's effective with quite a lot of modules you can actually benefit from. So this is the full suite available to me at the minute. And you can see right down from incidents to method statements. But I'm not going to dwell on the modules too long because just of time scale today. But if you did want to find out any information, just use the question pane or email us and we'll get straight back to you. So let's just have a look at the first two, my dashboard and organization. So essentially my dashboard is, I like to think of it as a kind of inbox. So let's say your own, your own personal hub on effective software. Everyone has a unique my dashboard. If you have a multi-site setup, you won't need to go anywhere else. Um, let's say if you have multiple locations and you have access, access to each of those locations in effective software. Um, my dashboard will essentially be the place you'll always want to go and it is one of my favorite areas on the system because essentially I don't have to go looking for my tasks let's say let's say if I've been assigned an action or an incident investigation all I'll have to do is rather than go to the specific modules or specific areas I can just click in this little tab here my dashboard and let's just have a quick look at it and it essentially brings up all my personal tasks and such so you can see here straight away it's bringing me to a page which is telling me right we're on the actions tab and I'm logged in under my own email and I've been assigned two actions here and it just gives me the details about those actions now just to give you a really brief overview actions are tasks on the system essentially or anything you want to assign a specific individual so that means if you've assigned me let's say an action I can log in and I can comment on it and close it whenever the action is done so you can see here you can you can set a due date you can link it to an audit maybe that you've carried out and you just give the user the action title and maybe a, a couple of additional details so that means when they're done they can just go in and comment on it and close it off and you can see the close button here on the right hand side so that was just uh, my actions tab but if you see up the top tabs here you can see actions tasks training risk audits and even hazards so these are every task or I suppose module area in relation to who I'm logged in as so I can see all my upcoming training let's say if we're using the training aspect of the system I can see the risk assessments I've been trained on and have access to them through here. Uh, I can even see what audits I've been assigned and completely access any audit from here as well. So we're just going to take a step back. So that's just my dashboard, just a really brief overview. Now the next main 
So the main modules really we're going to go through today are incidents, training, risk and audits. So I always just like to go into organization as well because essentially, let's just click organization, this is where your employee profiles will be kept. Now I'm just going to, as it's a demo site, you can see there's a good bit of demo information here. But essentially what it is, is a reporting structure with everyone's, everyone's name and profile. So we're going to take a complete example here, uh, myself, so Michael Murray, and it gives me my job title, and it just tells me that I'm reporting to one of these individuals above me, so we can see if I click on my profile, for example, that's going to bring, bring me to a page where I can see information about me. So once, once I click on it, it brings up all my information on the right, and you can see we can attach pictures, we can capture very specific information. But on the left is where, where I really, really like to drill into the details. So you can see that there's a number of panes or tabs. So we can see that training. We can see that I'm compliant in a good bit of training here through a traffic light system. And we're going we're gonna to go into training now in a second. But it's just giving you an overview of that employee's profile. So we can see training risk training maybe I was so if I click risk training it's showing me that I'm out of compliance in a couple of these risk assessments that are in my area it also shows what PPE I've been issued any audits I've been assigned to and any um, who reports to me so it's just a really handy little personal profile page and you can always download that in a PDF snapshot and send it on to whomever needs it so to begin with today's run through, we're going to start with incidents and the way I've set this up is essentially I'm going to be a general user. So there's two stages of really access on the system for each module. So there's general users, so people who can report incidents but maybe not see the, see the specific information on certain employees or maybe incidents that have happened in the past. So we give you the full ability to really um, to edit access of any individual on the system. So once you're trained up on the system, you essentially have as much access to the system as I would. So we train you fully up to, uh, to manage access levels, to even manage your information. So you don't have to come back to us with uh, maybe changes or maybe areas you want to update on your instant form. Um, now, while you always can and we're always happy to help, we give you the ability and the training to uh, to essentially set up your own incident forms and to train other people on it. So let's just try incidents here and we're going to briefly just see once I click into incidents I've set up five groups here so essentially five incident reports. So today I'm just going to report let's say a general incident so let's think of ourselves as just maybe an employee we've given access to so we've delegated out access to the system so anyone can report incidents rather than, a, rather than maybe a paper copy going straight to our health and safety department. So they can just log in and hit new general incident. And what I've built here is a demo form of uh, one of the HSE's incident types. So we can see here on the left hand side, it's going to ask me some information. I'm going to say, let's say it's a lost day cause and it gives us the definition as to what that means. So even if you are a general user, you do get a lot of help with the system. So it does, it does indicate what's needed and it does tell you certain areas like what incident type you're choosing and what that type means. So you can see as we go down through the form, it's going to say give me a date, uh, give me a time, location, exact location and at the very bottom police called yes or no. So right up under that we get our incident overview where you can set up your own predefined list of questions you want your user to uh, fill out. So any, any questions you need answered. And on the right hand side we can use the additional tools to fill in our incident form. So add people that were involved, maybe equipment or even corrective actions. So let's just add one person to the incident and we're just going to scroll through this really quickly. So it comes up on the bottom left and it's just going to ask us additional questions, right, was the, 
was it an employee, contractor, etc., who got injured? And if I select contractor, it's just going to ask me a couple of extra details, so the name, the company, etc. But let's leave it as an employee. So down we can see it gives us details of injury sustained, a body map where, where we can highlight different areas maybe they got injured, and a specific set of questions. You can see there's only one here I've set up, but free text questions um, to help you define what actually happened. So you can see there's a lot of different question types and such, but this incident form is very configurable. And what, what I like to do when, uh, when implementing a system is really get the form that you maybe uh, you'd use currently and sort of replicate it on our system here and to match maybe the questions and classifications that you would track. So let's say we just filled in all that information there. Once we hit save and submit, that gets sent to our investigation team. So remember, we're a general user. So once we hit this button, essentially it's out of our hands and it goes to our health and safety team where they can investigate the incident and use our additional functionality there such as five wise analysis, root cause, etc. So that's just reporting an incident. I just wanted to really br briefly run through how that kind of works. So you can see there, it should take no longer than five minutes to report an incident on the system. You can see it's, it's once you click incident, it brings you to a group and you just select new incident. So I don't want to take you through too much there. So we're going to have a quick jump into training next. And this is a, this is a module I really like to, uh, to demonstrate because of uh, its visual aspects. So we, we can see here, once we select training, very similar outcome to incidents, and you'll see that throughout the system. So once, let's say if you're using one module, you'll notice if you then expand into another area of the system, it'll come very easily to anyone that uses it. So we select a category, so let's say health and safety, for example, and then what it does, it essentially brings up a filter option. So it's going to ask us, okay, um, what do you want to see? Whose training do you want to see? So I'm going to say, right, departments, I want to see all of accounts and all of administration's training. And you can see you can use those filters. If you have a big organization list or a lot of employees, you can really filter what you want to see. So let's just hit filter and I'll explain what it brings up now. So I'll have to zoom out so you can see it correctly. And you can see there, it brings up a traffic light system. So it's going to bring up our employees on the left with the courses up top here. And I'll scroll down a bit so you can see. And it gives us some percentages that we can just see essentially what's, what's out of compliance and what's not. So let's hover over one of these traffic lights. So we can see Derek Hyo here has fire extinguisher training. And he's been trained on it on the 12th of April. So it expires in three years time, which is 2019. So remember, just this is just a snapshot to show you uh, your compliance and training. Essentially what you do then is you'd go into the, your calendar or schedule a course and it's, uh, it's very easily done through the system. So let's say I had a lot of people that needed fire extinguisher training. I can just click fire extinguisher, the actual name itself, and it, it brings me to a page where I can essentially set up a course. Now we're not going to uh, go into too much detail here but you can see how it kind of works by showing the people on the left and basically their traffic lights. So we can see Sean needs fire extinguisher training. He's expired currently. But we can also see everyone's, let's say Niall here. Okay, he's come up, coming up top of the list. So if I hover over that it's actually telling me Niall's expiring the 19th of September 2018 and we can see the next person is the same as well. So it it does allow you to see when the next people are expiring, etc. So we just add a date, location, instructor and schedule that course. Now what that does is it essentially allows you to schedule courses and put certificates against courses. And remember we looked at the employee profiles, it automatically updates them straight away once you schedule a course in. So that's a really brief explanation about training. Um, 
them. Now, I have about 10 minutes to run through risk and audit, so I'm just going to jump into risk now. So risk, now what I've set up this user as, it's essentially a general user with, um, with access to risk assessments. So we can see we, it jumps straight into a section called live risk assessments. So what does that mean? So we've set up the system here essentially to read all, um, all our live risk assessments on this particular site. So these are all ones that are, let's say, in date and that are still applicable. And if they're not applicable, we can always send them to a folder which is called the archive. Now just to remember here, nothing is ever deleted on the system. If you ever do need something deleted, we're always um, happy to do so as long as um, there's, there's reasoning behind it, let's say, so if it's a mistake or such. But if you ever want to um, update a risk assessment, what happens is the old, old version is sent to the archive, so you can always bring up um, information on it, let's say. Now, just to really, uh, if we wanted to have a look at risk here, so we'll we'll stick with uh, with maybe not maybe not the live section. We'll go into templates because this is where risk assessment really shows its power on the system. So essentially, what you can do and what um what I've set up other companies to do is really build a set list of templates. So let's say you could be working in construction, you could build a template on your um on your effective site and essentially share that to everyone within the company. So that means that anyone who has access to the system, and this, these are general users as well, can go in and essentially use your template. So let's click on the first one here, operating assembly machine. So essentially, if we zoom out and have a quick look, this is what the risk assessment page looks like. It just gives us our general information and under that, it gives us our risks, hazards, um, and control measures. So we can see the risk ratings as well. Now, up on the top right, I can choose to use this template. And what this does, it means I don't have to enter in all the information from scratch. It's done for me. What I can do is I can remove the hazards that don't apply to my workplace, or maybe control measures that are no longer needed, let's say. So it is a massive help, basically, when creating your risk assessments to have this, have this tool available to you so you don't have to duplicate on work. And you can even clone assessments that are very similar to yours. Let's say you have a, you have a department in the, in the organization which, which might use very similar aspects of, of the workplace. So essentially, you can have the ability to clone their risk assessments and slightly edit them. So you'd be able to use or collaborate on, on risk assessments within your organization. And now remember that these are general users. So just how, how the process works is if I was to use this template and maybe, maybe I didn't need to change anything about it. So I'd have to submit this for approval. So we do have that functionality to say, right, if, if, people aren't using risk assessments, it will be rejected, and you have the ability to reject a risk assessment someone submitted. So let's say you know that they're missing really key hazards or really key control measures. You can always go into their risk assessment and just check. You can see that there's a tab here called Removed Hazards. If I click that um, and someone submitted a risk assessment to me, it'll show me exactly what they removed from my template. So again, a really handy tool to um, to utilize when you're using risk assessments. The last thing I just want to do is I just want to download the PDF. So let's have a look here. So you can see there'll be a lot of download PDFs on the system, but essentially it downloads all the information instantly onto a PDF. So maybe you needed to email it to someone. And the writing's a bit small for you there because my screen is just not zoomed in. So let's have a quick zoom in. So it just gives us the control measures, the key information. Below it gives us our risk calculator. And below that, it actually gives us our control measures. So the system tracks control measures as live data and will update them as you update your control measures, let's say. So if you've set one to complete it, it'll automatically update the risk assessment and any risk assessment that control measure is involved in. 
So let's click back to dashboard here and we're going to have one last look at the audit module. And I know Fergal mentioned we will be going through um, basically the audit module and its capabilities as an internal client webinar Friday. Um, so the audit module works with our app, which is an offline auditor app. So essentially you could take your um, checklists and audits offline and go out on site and complete them on your tablet. And then when you come back to Wi-Fi area, you just sync them straight back to the system. They're all sent back to your administrator who can approve them from there. So again, a really handy device and one that I'll be demoing Friday to internal clients. But we always do record these at webinars. So if, if the app is an interest area of yours, um, don't hesitate to ask for that recording. So let's have a look at audits. Now, rather than go into the audit module, I'm going to have a look at maybe I've been assigned an audit. So I've been emailed from the system that I've been assigned an audit to do by a certain date. Rather than click into the audit module, I'm going to show you how my dashboard works. So let's click my dashboard. Now a huge area, so it's, it's taken us into the action page again. But let's click tasks. Let's see, let's see if I have any audits. And yeah, it's telling me I have three audits I've been assigned. And we can see the date assigned and the summary. So let's, have a, let's go into one and complete one here. So I'm just going to click on the top one. And that's going to bring us to complete that audit straight away. So you can see how fast you can get to uh, to your audit sections and what audits you have to do. So you'll you'll have that page available to you. And it's taken me directly to the audit here where I can have a look at the general information, download the checklist as a PDF. Maybe I wanted to print it off and go off offline, let's say, and if I didn't use my app. And we're going to have a look and it's going to tell me, right, I have six sections to do. Let's click on one of these sections. Um, and it's going to give me a number of questions I have to answer. So you can see here the question is a yes, no, not applicable. And we can go all the way down and just have a look. So they're all yes, no, not, ap not applicable questions. But the way the audit module works, essentially the question types you can set up are very, uh, you, you have a lot of types you can set up. So let's say if you wanted a, a signature sign-off, we have that ability. If you wanted a GPS and location, there's also that question that actually brings in um, your GPS from your tablet or mobile device automatically. And you can also set up any, any question like yes, no, or maybe green, red, or amber, or even if you just wanted a single line or a number. So rather than complete the whole audit, we're just going to have a look at the buttons down below. Let's say we completed all our sections. We can save as a draft or save and submit. So save and submit sends it on to our approver. Um, as we're a general user, we have, to set, we have to submit our audits for approval. So they have to have that last little bit or last little check, let's say. So my approver can say, I'm happy with that. And my approver can even raise actions off it. So let's say... Um, something needed to be done because a particular area of my audit failed or maybe a non-conformance came out of it. So we can always raise an action and our approver can then assign that action to uh, any specific individual to do. And remember, the actions are always tracked against what audits they're, um, they have come from. So it gives the user that ability to see what maybe what question or what, what specific area this, uh, this action has arisen from. So that's, that's essentially the four main modules I've just went through. Now, I know I went through quite fast, and if you have any questions, ask away. But down below, the last thing I want to show you is the reporting output. So you can see if I was to click KPIs, I'm going to click into that and reporting for just a brief minute. So first thing is reporting, and all I'm going to do is show you how instantaneous you can get a report off the system. So let's choose training for example and I'm going to click into the training status by module and now we're a bit limited to time so I'm just going to pull off a report so I'm going to say we're going to go into the into a, a different site for this so I know there's information so bear with me. So 
I'm going to go into the reporting module and training status by module again. And I'm just going to pull off a quick PDF report of Hilton safety training. So I just want to see how the training, maybe a snapshot of the training. So if I print that report, and we're just going to see how health and safety training is doing. So you can see it pulls that instantaneously off the system. We can see that confined space has about 78% uh, compliance, etc. So you can also pull spreadsheets off the system, so Excel spreadsheets as well. Now if I was to click on the KPI module, it'll bring up essentially my KPI, uh, my KPI, KPI chart on the system. So we can see here that I've set up some test information here. So you can track specific figures, such as overdue risk corrective actions or plant non-compliance. And you can just track numbers against each month to make sure you're hitting those numbers. And if you're not, maybe you want someone notified that you're uh, you're missing specific uh, specific KPIs that you want to uh, that you want to hit. So now we're just we're just after quarter past here. So that's that's all I wanted to take you through today. So I'm just going to have a quick look at the questions here for a quiet minute. So I'll be back to you in a couple of seconds. I have a couple of questions there. First question to Michael, um, can you upload training certificates uh, for individuals? Um, yeah, you can indeed. So let's just, let's just have a quick look at how you would do that. Um, so within training, we'd need to be an administrator here. Now, I think I've set this user up. Indeed, I have. So every training session you set up on the system is tracked through a little calendar piece like this. So let's go in. We can see that there was someone set up a, a training course for 2015 in manual handling. So let's have a look here. So what the system allows you to do, and what uh, you can see that this is quite a big course. There's quite a few people on this manual handling course. But what the system allows you to do is attach a single certificate for all attendees or upload individual certificates. So you get to upload maybe one certificate for everyone. Maybe it saves you some time or you can choose to upload a certificate for every single person on that training course. You can see here, you just browse, you just upload the, sort, the cert from your, from your own uh, PC or laptop. And once you save, that certificate is always saved on the system, and you'll even be able to download it from that employee's profile. So that's how you do that. Okay, the second question goes to the, the our software and the size company that we um, we deal with. The question was, is the software uh, and the pricing structure orientated towards large businesses? Um, and the, the answer to that is no. Um, we, ha uh, we have customers with 10 people and we've got customers with 14,000. So basically our software and its usage and the pricing will uh, be equally applicable to SMEs as well as large enterprises. Um, and the last question that we have is just to uh, Michael, which is, uh, can you tell us in your experience what the most critical part of the onboarding process is? Yeah, so good question. Uh, most critical part of the onboarding, uh, in my view, the most critical part is having the having the right or the right information available. So. What we do is we essentially we bulk upload information to the system. We we want you to pretty much start your system off at a <clears throat> off at a flying pace, so it's it's going to come very easily to you. So we want that information 
let's say, employee information or previous incidents. So if you wanted all that available to you, rather than you having to input it manually to the system from scratch, what, what I like to do and what we need to do is import it all before you start using the system. And so I know our customers in the past have loved that tool. So when they kick off the system, all that maybe training information or previous training information is already up there. So having that information available and maybe it's maybe not even having it available straight away, but having the having the right people in touch with the software and know that that information is going to be made available to us or or we need to have that information available in the near future is always essential. So that's that's one of the big areas I like to push home from from our first point of call. So yeah, that's that's that question. question was do all the extra modules cost extra um, this probably will take a little bit of face-to-face -face discussion with anybody that's interested in detail and price but the basic message is, is that there are certain foundation applications that everybody gets so the foundation applications the kpis reports your organization structure so the bits and pieces that the system actions the system needs to make it work and then on top of that you can buy based upon what is fit for your needs. Um, so the, what's fit for your needs, you can buy one module, which would be, let's say, incident reporting, or uh, you can buy three modules, or you can buy five modules, or you can buy seven modules. So basically, you decide what is important to you, and then you decide which modules you choose. 